This sermon is brought to you by Bloomfield Presbyterian Church, Belfast. To know Jesus and share his love. So we're going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, 11 to 16. And this is found on page 1194 in your pew Bibles. The reading is from 1 Tim- Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 to 9- 16. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honour and might forever. Amen. Does anybody know who this is? Who is it? Queen Elizabeth, the late Queen Elizabeth. And everybody knows who she is because half the world watched her funeral just three weeks ago. Now, does anybody know any fun facts about the Queen? For example, what football team did she support? Yes? Don't be rude. Rangers and Arsenal. (laughs) I didn't know about Rangers, but there we go. All right, I certainly knew about Arsenal. How tall was the Queen? The answer is not very tall. She was five foot three, and I'm six foot one. She was quite small. Okay. Next question What were her favorite doggies? Yes? Corgis. And does anybody know how many she had through her life? Five. Do you know something? She had 30. Throughout her life, she had 30 corgis. How about that? Does anybody know where the queen died? Yes. Balmoral in what country? In Scotland, that's right, way, way up in the highlands of Scotland. And the final fun question is this, how many prime ministers served under her? When she was the monarch, how many prime ministers went and came? Anybody know? Yes, at the back? Fifteen, you're absolutely right. Very well done, mummy. All right, so... (laughs) Oh, no, no, maybe that was very unfair. All right, so lots of people know who this is. The second question is this, has anybody here actually seen the Queen? Raise your hand if you've seen the Queen. Okay, quite a number of you have seen the Queen. Let's let's see, way, 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 way back at the corner, where did you see the Queen? In Carlisle and Edinburgh at the same time? Okay, different times. Anybody else? Yes? In the Commonwealth Games. And where were they held? In Edinburgh as well. Oh, there we go. That's great. So quite a number of you have seen the Queen. I once saw her in June 2012. That was 10 years ago when she visited Stormont. Uh, That was for her Diamond Jubilee. And the Queen liked to get out and about because she said she had to be seen to be believed. And there are lots of people who had seen the Queen, and that shows us she was a real-life person. 
Now, here's a third question. Not only do we know some things about her, not only have some of you have actually seen her, but has anybody here ever met her? Oh, Mr. Manson, come on up to the front. Oh, Jen, come on up to the front. We have two people in the church who have actually met the Queen. Jen, this is amazing. Tell us about, tell us about meeting the Queen. Um, so I was invited to a garden party in Buckingham Palace in 2006 to meet the Queen. Um, I don't have any photographs of it because you weren't allowed to take any photographs in the gardens. But Alan and Julie Gilbreth were also there so they can verify that it did actually happen. <laughs> and, but don't believe Alan when he says that I pushed past him out of the way, elbowed him to get over to meet her because <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, I had done a lot of work with Duke of Edinburgh's Award and Girls' Brigade and they invited me to be their representative. But when I got the invite, I didn't really read it properly. And when I was at a GB meeting, they were all very excited about me going to this garden party. And I said, well, like I've been to Hillsborough before. And they said, it's not at Hillsborough, Jennifer, read the invite again. So it was at Buckingham Palace. And she was very lovely. She, um, we were pulled out and there was five people from Northern Ireland got to meet her. And she asked questions about what we had done. And I'd been at a Duke of Edinburgh's Award International Conference the year before in Hong Kong. And I'd had dinner with Prince Edward. And I said to her, <laughs> I said to her, um, oh, I met your son last year. I had dinner with him. <laughs> and she just looked at him, looked at me and said, I'm sure that was lovely. And I said, <laughs> I said yes, it was. Um, and she started giggling. So. Very good. So Jen made the Queen laugh. Well done. Thank you. Good. Billy, you don't need to be as long. No. <laughs> She's milking it. Well, actually, I sneaked in because the big invite that came, and it was beautiful, it was really lovely, was to my wife. So I was her plus one. She's best mate with the Duchess of Gloucester. Beat that, Jen. Um, <laughs> And, and I've been with the new king a couple of times, so it's just me and him are mates. Um, but like Jen, we were in Buckingham Palace, and it was a wonderful day. The sun was really out, and we were lined up with, well, maybe hundreds, if not thousands of people. So it's not as if you get to meet her face to face, and she came along, you're right. Frank, people had to get up. It was a bit like uh, it was the reverse of Zacchaeus. He got up into the tree, and people were trying to get up to see her as she came along. And she said to me, well, Billy, did you bring any marmalade sandwiches today? <laughs> no. No. She just said, are you having a nice afternoon? And I said, yes, ma'am. Round of applause for Billy. Now, where's Joshua, who read to us earlier on? Well done for that. Well done. And Josh read to us a little earlier on a passage where the Apostle Paul wrote to a young man just like you, whose name was Timothy. And in that letter, the Apostle Paul uh, wrote about Jesus. And do you know what Paul calls Jesus? This is what he says in the passage that Joshua read to us. He says, Jesus is the blessed and only ruler the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's what Paul calls Jesus. So we've been thinking about Her Majesty the Queen, who was the longest serving monarch this country has ever had. But Paul is telling young Timothy about Jesus from Nazareth, who is the King over all kings, the Lord over all all lords. Now, Paul knew a lot of things about Jesus. Let's see if some of us can think of some facts about Jesus. Uh, Time magazine, incidentally, have called Jesus the most influence, influential figure in all history. So, the first fun fact is this. Did you know that Josh, Jesus was a very common first-century name? 
it was as common then as Jack or Noah are today. Jesus wasn't a particularly unusual name. Lots and lots of people were called Jesus at the same time that he was. But it does have a great meaning. And the name of Jesus means God saves. There's, there's another name that we have today that means exactly the same, and it's called Joshua. So Joshua is also the same name as Jesus, and Joshua, it means God saves. That's a great name for you to have, and it just is coincidence that you read to us from the Scriptures tonight. So that's just a wonderful thing. So that's fact number one. Jesus, his name was quite common at the time that he was alive. Fact number two, did you know that Jesus had a number of half-brothers? And in fact, in Matthew's gospel, we're given their names. And these are common names as well. Common at the time, there was James, there was Joseph, there was Simon, and there was somebody called Judas. Not Judas Iscariot, a different Judas. You see, lots of people had the same names in those days. So, Jesus had a number of half-brothers, and he had some sisters as well. In other words, he grew up as part of a big family. Fun fact number three. Does anybody know what Jesus' first job was? Yes? You're absolutely right. He was a carpenter. Now, often in those days, 2,000 years ago, a son would take on their father's business. And we know that uh, Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, was a carpenter or a builder. He might have been a builder because that's often what carpenter was called. So, before the Lord Jesus started uh, calling His disciples to follow Him, He too was a craftsman. He worked with His hands. So, there are some of the fun facts that we can know about Jesus. But, but there's more than that. Not only can we know things about Jesus, but lots and lots and lots of people saw Jesus. They saw Jesus themselves. During Jesus' three and a half years of ministry, Jesus traveled up and down the land of Israel, and He taught, and He healed, and He made good lots of things that had gone bad. He showed people what life under God's rule could look like. Lots and lots of people saw Jesus when He was alive. But here's an even more remarkable thing. Lots and lots of people saw Jesus after He had been crucified and when He had been raised from the dead. People like the Apostle Peter, James, the brother of Jesus, more than 500 people at the same time. So, before the Lord Jesus returned to be with His Father at the throne in heaven, the Lord Jesus was seen by lots and lots of people. He had to be seen to be believed. But here's the best bit of all. Jesus isn't just someone we can know lots of things about. Jesus isn't just someone who was seen by lots and lots of people a couple of thousand years ago. But Jesus was someone that the Apostle Paul actually met himself, and it transformed his life. Listen to what he says a little earlier in the same letter that uh, Paul wrote to Timothy. If you were to look at chapter 1, you could see these words. Paul says, even though I was a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, Paul writes to young Timothy, even though I hated Jesus and everything about Jesus, God showed me mercy. And we're told that on the road to a place called Damascus, where he was going in order to hurt people who called Jesus the King and Lord, Jesus met with the Apostle Paul, and Jesus changed his life. He showed mercy to Paul. He forgave Paul for his many sins, because as he says in chapter 6, instead of, of fighting Jesus, he started to pursue righteousness and godliness and faith and love and endurance 
and gentleness. I think we should ask these two up again. Billy, come on up again, and Jen, come on up one more time, because earlier on, these two good people told us about meeting the Queen. Not only did you see the Queen, but you met her. You shook hands with her. You spoke with her. But I know that you have met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've actually met Jesus. Now, how do we get our heads around that? What does that actually mean? What does it look like? Billy, tell us. Well, just the, the way we've learned things about the Queen tonight, I suppose my mum and other leaders told me lots of things about Jesus. And then, as I got to know things about him, then I thought this was someone that I needed to meet. And when I was probably at junior section age, at a particular meeting one night, and a man just said, if you'd like to meet Jesus, I can show you the way. And I said, I would very much like to meet him. And that was a long time ago. And uh, I've been meeting him every day since. Believe it or not, not just once when I went to Buckingham Palace to see the Queen. And I don't have to go to a big palace to, to meet him. I can meet him anywhere. At least that's what the scriptures say. And that's my experience. Jen, was your story exactly the same? Um, I, like Billy, I had lots of uh, friends and family who knew Jesus, and I grew up in a family who loved Jesus, and I went to church all the time, it felt like, and went to girls' brigade and everything in church. But it's very easy to just go and hear the same thing over and over again. But I went to a mission in our church in Newtonards, and it was there that someone just gave a message that just really struck a chord with me and made me really think about what direction my life was going in. And I was about 10 at the time. And at that point, I, I said that I wanted to follow Jesus. And whilst I did meet Jesus every day after that, there are certainly times in my life that I maybe haven't met him as much. And, and that's the good thing is that Jesus always allows you to come back to him, even if you have stopped meeting with him. It's not that just if you don't meet him a few days that you can never see him again, but he's always welcoming you back. Um, and that is, that's really quite unbelievable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Billy, very much indeed. Because I think what you've told us is that not only did you meet Jesus a long time ago, but you're keeping up that relationship with him now, and you are getting to know him more and more and more. And what an amazing thing that we can know the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, for ourselves. What an amazing truth. And when I was your age, that's when I met with the Lord Jesus too. And the Lord Jesus has been my God and my King ever since. And I cannot tell you of a better life because he loves you and he wants to enjoy your company as well. Thank you for listening to Bloomfield Presbyterian Church Sermon Audio. We're a congregation in East Belfast with worship services at 11am and 7pm every Sunday. For more information, visit bloomfieldpresbyterian.org.